Polly Higgins gave a talk at the University of Southampton about supporting a law making ecocide illegal internationally. Polly, what exactly is ecocide? Ecocide is the extensive damage, destruction to or loss of ecosystems. It, the word itself actually goes back to the 1970s. What I've done is I've given it a legal definition and there are two types of ecocide at play here. Uh, one is human-caused ecocide, you could call it corporate ecocide, and the other one is naturally occurring ecocide. And the importance here is, is that actually by creating an international law of ecocide, on one hand we're criminalising mass damage and destruction, and on the other hand we're also creating a legal duty of care to give assistance and ensure no harm uh, occurs, no significant harm occurs for future generations. And what's the impact of our current way of working? At the moment, we actually have the exact opposite. Uh, we've got a system set up here that's putting the interests of, of the, the shareholder first, by law. So what happens there is that we're putting profit first in essence. And when we put profit first, we fail to even look to the consequences, never mind even try to address the consequences. So with that huge marching advancement of transnational corporations nowadays, nowadays what we're seeing is our whole economic system is now predicated on ecocidal activity because we're not actually addressing at source the harm and saying first do no harm. That's what a law of ecocide will, will stop, will fundamentally flip, flip that whole paradigm so that it becomes the exception rather than normative that we have today. How will the law be framed in order to avoid the law of unintended consequences, i.e. something like making it illegal to eradicate Ebola? This is a very important question, the unintended consequences. The proposal that I've made for ecocide law, what it does is it, it actually draft, it's drafted as a strict liability crime. So it doesn't matter what you intend or don't intend. Actually, that, that, that's parked to the side. That only comes in for sentencing provisions. What matters here is whether or not it causes significant harm. And if it does, you just can't go there. And so it imputes upon those at the very top end, CEOs, directors, heads of state, ministers, financiers, lobbyists, a legal duty of care to put the health and well-being of people first. And when that happens then, you start questioning, for instance, if you're looking at Ebola, you start to look at actually the pharma pharmaceutical system. You, you question actually the health and well-being of the people. What is it, rather than trying to sell clean bottled water, why isn't it we're going to source to ensure that the water is clean in the first place? And that's very important because we start to ask fundamental questions about decision making upstream before the harm even starts to escalate, that it becomes of national and international significance. What do you think will be the significance to non-signatory countries? Right, we have now 122 countries that are signatories to the Rome Statute. And ecocide law, I'm seeking an amendment to that international statute to make it an international crime. Those countries that aren't signatories, what that means is that they have no say in whether or not this is made an international law. Of course, they can continue committing ecocide in their own territory or in other territories that aren't signatories. But as soon as they step out of their own country or wish to engage at an international level, and remember we're dealing with transnational corporations, that vastly compromises their economical and industrial activities, it actually means that you're no longer a global player and you become a marginal player overnight. So this really is about, okay, here are the new rules of the game, either come on board or vastly reduce uh, what you're doing. And of course that can have huge significant adverse economic consequences for those countries that rely greatly on international engagement, international investment, international business, and it really is one of those matters of are you a leader or are you a follower in this? And if you're not willing to come on board with this, in, in time you will have to in any event. And indeed the flow of finance won't even want to go there if you're not actually playing by the, the, the new paradigm that's put in place by law. Polly, thank you very much. Thank you.